Hi, my name is Lee Jones, and I'm presenting the paper, Learning with Stitch Samplers, Exploring Stitch Samplers as Contextual Instructions for e-textile tutorials. This was work completed during my PhD at Carleton University under the supervision of Audrey Girard. I work in the field of electronic textiles or e-textiles, which is a field that repurposes the conductive properties of certain threads and combines this with increasingly small computers. E-textiles are exciting for many reasons, but one of them is that it enables us to incorporate textile culture into computing. For example, we could imagine someone hand stitching a computational device, and this brings new tools, skills, and applications to computing. When we look at handcrafting e-textiles, hand sewing is the most common technique used, especially in educational settings. This combines two different skill sets. There's the tacit skill of stitching with needle and thread, for example, knowing how to use a needle as well as different stitching techniques. And then there's a physical computing knowledge, such as how to make circuits that work. With HCI and creativity support tools for e-textiles, the focus is on the second. And there are tools to, for example, confirm that a plant stitching design will have components in the right location with the correct polarity. But there's lack of tools to support the first skill set, that of tacit skills such as stitching. And successful systems are dependent on both. For example, if someone makes a stitch design with components in the correct location and polarity orientation, but makes loose stitches and therefore loose connections, the design will fail. So in this work, we try to explore how to integrate these two skill sets and do so by looking to how textile stitching techniques are taught and honing in on the design artifact of stitch samplers. Traditionally, stitching was taught by repeating the techniques of someone else's physical stitch sampler. Stitch samplers or embroidery samplers were tangible references that were used for learning, practicing, and demonstrating stitching techniques. Stitch samplers were often made by individuals who had mastered technique to then be copied by students and then repeated for practice. What makes samplers unique compared to other embroidered objects is that they were a practice space for performing and demonstrating many different techniques on a single piece of fabric. Individuals usually had several samplers for different techniques, such as one for alphabet numbers, like the one presented here from the late 1700s. And these samplers were then used to demonstrate mastery of needlework and could be used to teach others the same stitching techniques. Here's another uh, example of a sampler from the late 1700s, this time for darning, that shows different stitching techniques for mending holes in a garment. An individual would repeat the steps from someone else's sampler to learn how to mend their own garment, and then this would also be used for reference later on. In our previous work, we explored how individuals teach these same stitching techniques today. We found that visible mending educators still use physical samples of, uh, in their work, with, for example, different colors of threads used to show each stitch. We reported on the stitching techniques that they used to teach these tacit skills. Then we translated these same techniques for textiles to create an e-darning sampler for mending. But this sampler, stitched by hand, isn't scalable, so we wanted to explore how we can share these techniques more broadly and make them more accessible. In this paper, we explored the concept of printed stitch samplers on fabric, a trend we call modern stitch samplers to differentiate them from their hand-stitched predecessors. Commercially, stitch samplers with printed guides and instructions on fabric are sold to help individuals learn embroidery techniques without an instructor. Samplers also help individuals learn the tangible and tacit skills that are often difficult to convey and are used to guide individuals through the process. We then use these same design techniques to inform the design of our e-textile stitch sampler. Our overall research question for this project was, how should we design practice samplers to help individuals practice the tacit skill of stitching while learning how to make e-textile patterns? To do so, we ran three studies to inform our recommendations on e-textile samplers. I'll go over the highlights. In the first study, we interviewed individuals who designed modern stitch samplers with printed guides. Overall, our stitch sampler designers describe stitch samplers as a way to take printed patterns from books and other materials and reproduce them in place. These stitch samplers supported novices because it gave them a pattern to start from, rather than having students chalk and mark one out beforehand. And because they are designed as practice projects rather than final end projects, they are a good introduction to stitching for those who have not stitched before, but can also be used for more advanced stitchers who want to learn new techniques. Finally, students would like samplers to be more visual with added guides and videos. Based on these initial interviews, we hypothesized that stitch samplers would be a useful way of guiding e-textile novices through initial exercises to translate stitching references and instructions onto the fabric they would use for practice. Printing on fabric is an inexpensive way for educators to provide instructions and reference material for students. For our study, we used a commercial print-on-demand fabric supplier. 
We uploaded our file and ordered several meters of sampler fabric that we then cut up into rectangles of approximately eight and a half by 11 inches, which then became less than one US dollar per sampler. We designed this initial sampler using the same techniques as the designers used in their modern stitch samplers. For this beginner e-textile sampler, the five activities on the sampler included one, how to use a running stitch to make traces, two, how to use a satin stitch to secure printed circuit board components, three, the design of a simple circuit, for the design of a parallel circuit, and five, the design of a simple circuit with a switch. To evaluate this e-textile stitch sampler and during the pandemic, for study two, we did contactless drop-off deliveries and then watched as folks complete them through Zoom using a think aloud protocol. Designs that work, our participants said the sampler was useful for gradually learning the techniques and progressing from practice stitches to then applying them to making circuits. The number of activities and alphabetized steps not only help to guide individuals through those steps, but also help with communication between the researcher and participant, which would be especially useful for distance learning settings. The polarity icons helped individuals create their circuits and self-correct polarity errors. Designs that need to be changed. Overall, the sampler concept need to be explained, i.e. that stitch lines are guides. Whereas modern stitch samplers introduce new stitches throughout the sampler, with each sampler, the components and terminology need to be introduced at the beginning. Also, while stitch samplers might include many stitching techniques and activities on one sampler, our participants recommended that more space was needed for each samplers and that each activity needs its own sampler page. After testing the samplers out with novices, we want to interview educators to better understand how they teach e-textiles and the opportunities and limitations of samplers within their courses. The pandemic has given e-textile educators a unique time to reflect on e-textiles and how to teach them in a distance learning setting, where teacher and students are not loc located in the same place. Our interviews with e-textile educators uncover some of the potential benefits as well as limitations of e-textile samplers. The benefits include debugging at a distance where the sampler could help with communication and troubleshooting for specific activities. The ability to illustrate one's own sampler and design samplers that scaffold the specific needs of their students depending on how they are approaching e-textiles. Our educators used a wide variety of e-textile toolkits to keep costs down and recommend that component design illustrations need to be toolkit agnostic so that they could work with any toolkit. From these three studies, we provide the following recommendations for each samplers, and you can find more details on each in our paper. One, include practice space. Two, one activity per sampler. Three, treat the sampler as reference notes to describe each activity. Four, introduce components all at once at the beginning. Five, use toolkit agnostic symbols when possible. Six, include numerical and alphabetized steps and terminology. Overall, stitch samplers are a financially accessible and locally reproducible method of providing in-place e-textile tutorials. Ours cost approximately one US dollar per sampler page and print-on-demand fabric suppliers are available around the world. For researchers without suppliers nearby, these techniques are also reproducible with DIY screen printing methods. We provide our design files in our supplementary files and hope e-textile researchers and educators can remix them for using their own workshops and courses. Thanks for watching.